You're welcome to Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids. A series of cautionary tales for lovers of squeam. How many fingers am I holding up, Spindleshanks? Five? I've only got three. He thinks he needs glasses because he keeps having accidents with his fingers. <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you it's not your eyes, it's you poking your fingers in where they didn't ought to be? You should watch this, Spindleshanks. It's called Little Fingers. When Daffy Thomas was born, his little fingers had the devil in them. They played symphonies on the TV remote, they picked his nose, they played catch with his mum's best china, they even rang the front doorbell, then hid behind his back. Daffy's fingers were the fiddliest fingers in Wales. Fingers in the cake mix, fingers in the ink, fingers in the butter dish, fingers in the sink, fingers in the video, frisbeeing a hat. Fingers in the hi-fi, fingers in the cat. That is dirty, Daffy. Oh, sorry, ma'am. I wasn't looking what I was doing. I thought it was a woolly glove. And so it was that his mother and father took a holiday to escape from Daffy's little fingers. But who will feed me? Your lovely Granny Gwyneth. But she's 93. Last time she cooked toast, she set the kitchen on fire. <laughs> Granny Gwyneth's idea of a busy day was to sit in her armchair and snooze. <laughs> Daffy couldn't leave the house in case she fell out of her chair or needed her 16th mug of tea. He was trapped for two whole weeks babysitting the babysitter. He couldn't even have a conversation with her because she was as deaf as a post. Shall we go to the cinema today, Granny Gwyneth? No. No hairs on my chin yet, Daffy dear. No, the cinema. To see a film. Oh, yes, lovely. But I prefer cockles or jelly deals. I've always been partial to a little snake in the basket. So great was Daffy's boredom that by the third day of his imprisonment, every object in the house had been fiddled with and broken. All except the telephone. While Granny Gwyneth gassed on about pet food or the price of milk, Daffy dialed numbers at random to see who he got. Now then, knitting. There's a fine profession for a young man, Daffy. Knitting cardigans and booties. Daffy prayed for someone interesting at the other end. Hello, said a sing-song Italian voice. Hello, said Daffy. Who's that? It's a pizza mafiosa here. Uh, what do you want? What have you got? said Daffy. We do all the pizza at Pizza Mafiosa, my friend. There's uh, the meat massacre, the pepperoni punch-up, the shotgun the special. That it comes with the extra noble kneecaps on the top, if you like. We do a very nice uh, rabbit punch, a concrete overcoater that's quite heavy on the stomach, uh, that one, and a kidnap caper. They all come in a nice uh, wooden box uh, with a side order of horse's head and a garlic bed. Mmm. Would you recommend the kidnap caper? Only if you is a child. Is on our children's menu. Yes, I am. Good. You on your own? Well, apart from Granny. Ah, it's perfect. We can deal with her. And your parents, are they rich? I don't know. They've just gone on holiday, so I guess they must be. OK. One kidnap caper on its way. Don't move. Where do you live? <laughs> Daffy told the man where he lived put down the phone and licked his lips. He loved pizza. When the doorbell rang, Granny Gwyneth was remembering World War II. Those were the days, look you, 
singing songs in the shelters while bombs burst overhead, eating powdered eggs and bully Buonasera, signor. Your pizza. Oh, yes. A kidnap caper. I can hardly wait, see? Where is it? In the van. Now. Oh, the pizza's in the van, is it? Too big to carry on your own? Shut your mouth and come with me. Righty-ho. Is that your vehicle? Very impressive. Most people deliver pizzas on motorbikes. Business good, is it? Move. But Granny Gwyneth... I've left her talking about the war. Get in. All right, but you haven't told me how much this kidnap caper's going to cost yet. Everything your mama and papa have got. It had better be good, then. Ooh, it's dead posh in here, isn't it? What's this? Leave it alone. Oh, and look at this. Will you stop the fiddling? What does this do? Oh, ho, ho! Mum, me. <laughs> The next day, a ransom note plopped through the letterbox. But Granny Gwyneth didn't hear it. Mind you, Duffet, the nights were terrible cold in the war. We used to burn rats to keep us warm, look you. So the ransom note lay unopened, which was a shame because it read, Dear Mr and Mrs Thomas, we have got your son. Enclosed is one finger to prove it. Bring £10,000 to Piccadilly Circus tonight or we'll send you another one. The Pizza Papa. The next day, another envelope arrived and was missed by Granny Gwyneth. Did I ever tell you about the day Di died? That was a sad, sad day, Daffy. Another day, another finger. <laughs> and so it continued for eight more days. <laughs> Until Mr and Mrs Thomas returned home from holiday. You can imagine how surprised they were to find their son's fingers on the doormat. You can imagine how surprised yeah. Granny Gwyneth was too. Mr Thomas paid the ransom immediately and Daffy was returned the following morning. Lovely to see you again, Daffy, said his mother. How are you feeling? asked his father. Well, said Daffy, not with my fingers, that's for sure. <laughs> and everyone laughed, because that was just about the best news his parents had ever had. <laughs> <laughs> Spindle Shanks, you've been writing that for hours. What is it? Dear storyteller, I hate you for scaring me all the time. I am leaving. Look, I'm sorry. Don't go. I'll be nice from now on, Spindle Shanks. Do you want a hand? <laughs> Ha, 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 ha!